All right, 50 years ago, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood premiered on TV, and there was magic in that neighborhood along with love, safety, and equality. Fred Rogers, the creator and star of the show, became a mainstay in the lives of millions of children, including this one right here. I definitely watched the show growing up. All these years later, we're still impacted by this humble man, and now the first full-length biography about Mr. Rogers is out. It's called The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers, and author Maxwell King joins us. Maxwell, are we related? My last name is King. We must be related. Somewhere, don't you think? right? Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> and we, we have to start with what happened this weekend at the synagogue yes. uh, in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood. Yes. And I understand you're from that neighborhood? Yes, we live, uh, my wife Peggy and I live about five blocks from the synagogue where the shooting took place and the church where Fred Rogers went to church for 30 years was about four blocks away. Wow. So it's the neighborhood where where he lived also. And of course, Pittsburgh is just stricken by the horror of that. But uh, the good thing, and the thing that I think Fred, were he alive today, would appreciate is that already the whole community is coming together. There was a candlelight vigil at the main intersection in Squirrel Hill Saturday night with thousands of people. And uh, last night there was an interfaith service with, oh, I guess about five or 6,000 people there. So the community is coming together and beginning the process of coping and healing. As you know, he never shied away from controversial topics. He was very bold. He was very courageous about taking on uh, topics. And I think that's one of the reasons that his messages have lasted and still are, are coming up on the internet all the time when things happen is that he was pretty courageous about taking on tough issues and tough issues for children. Yeah, he, he talked to five, six-year-olds about things that we, we would think, oh, we need to shelter them from that. He, but he, was he did week-long special programs on war, on uh, loss, on death, these very di difficult topics. But uh, he had the ability to connect with children in a very meaningful way, and he worked really hard to focus his programming in a way that delivered messages on tough issues that, that children could deal with and, and could take hopeful things from. Let's, I want to ask you how you came to write this book because uh, since you're from the same neighborhood, you must have known him? Well, I only met Fred twice. Okay. I had a couple of conversations with him, one nice, very long conversation. I was running uh, a foundation in Pittsburgh called the Heinz Endowments, which funded his program, and the uh, president of the production company that made Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood asked me to come in and meet with Fred. So I thought it would be a conversation about money and about what kind of programming they were going to produce, and it wasn't. Uh, we talked about parents and children <laughs> and vacation houses. I talked to him for an hour and 20 minutes, wow. and he never mentioned the program or, or money. <laughs> but I didn't know him well. But when I retired from the Heinz Endowments, I went out to help St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, where Fred grew up, start uh, the Fred Rogers Center for Early Learning and, and Children's Media at St. Vincent. And after I'd been there a couple of months, I asked the president of the college and Joanne Rogers, Fred's widow, why don't we have a biography of Fred Rogers? He's this iconic American figure. Yeah. And you're asking me to raise millions of dollars to get the center going. We should have a biography. And they explained that Fred didn't want a biography. He was very modest, mm. and a lot of people had approached him, and he had said no. Finally, Joanne Rogers said, okay, Max, you're right. You write it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had a... A Were you a writer? So you I had a background as an editor and okay, a writer right, at so newspapers and magazines. Sure. So I decided to plunge in and do it. So you knew your way around a phrase. That's good. Yes. So what kind of pressure did you feel, given all that, that he didn't even want a biography written about him? I mean, that must have <coughs> felt like a bit of a way to do it right. I felt a lot of pressure to do a book that was worthy of the man. As I worked at the center and then as I researched the book and got to know Fred Rogers' history and character better and better and what he represented, I came to really, really like and admire him. And so I felt a lot of pressure to do a book that was worthy of the man. But I also, being having been a journalist for 30 years, I wanted to do a book that was fully honest, mm -hmm. that, that revealed 
everything about Fred, the, whatever issues there were. And he did have a temper. Nobody thought he had a temper. <laughs> But he did. He mostly got angry at, at technology. <laughs> we all do <laughs> his, that, right? His uh, secretary told me a wonderful story of coming into his office and find him, finding him trying to smash a tape recorder. <laughs> well, he was, though, also a symbol of, of tolerance and kindness. Oh, and absolutely. Caring, right? Ab but he was the sweetest about Mr. kindest Clemens, man. Like how he, that was a fascinating thing, what he did with Mr. Clemens on the show. Yes. Well, he had, there were two times that he sat at a waiting pool with, with uh, Antoine Clemens. And uh, the second time uh, was in the late 1990s and a time when there was a lot of discussion going on about uh, racial inclusion and racial equity. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that scene that, you, that you're showing right now, uh, Fred leaned down and he dried Francois's feet when they took, all took their feet out of, out of the, the waiting pool in a very powerful and symbolic gesture. And also uh, with, with Jeffrey Erlanger. Yes, well, well, Jeffrey Erlanger was the, the little boy in the wheelchair, probably yeah. the most famous piece of film yes. that was done Many on Mr. Mr. Rogers' yeah. Neighborhood. And uh, he, he, they sang together, they talked together. But the wonderful part of this, this story is that there was no preparation for that. There was no script. Wow. Fred Rogers' staff kept asking him, what's the script for the program? Little Jeff Erlinger's parents said, we have to, what's, what's he supposed to do? What's the script? And Fred said, we're just going to talk and sing. Because Fred knew this little boy, and he knew that he had a natural grace about him. And so he just trusted that the moment would unfold, and it cool. did in the most beautiful way. Well, thanks, Max. I look forward to reading more of your book. I, I really like to see when I did look at uh, part of it, I saw the, the actual scripts you have from the show. It's yes, really cool. yeah. Maxwell discusses his book, uh, The Good Neighbor, tonight at 7 at the Seattle Public Library, so you'll be yes. there, there for more information on this free event. You head to New Day's homepage. Thanks, Max. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So, so people can get your autograph, right? Sure. Okay, good. Right, <laughs> after the break, a, a great way to stand out this Halloween, easy face painting ideas for kids.